tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, this is a German painter Max Ernst here in the Japanese Wikipedia. Of course you have the Wikipedia articles about him in all kinds of languages, Francaise for, for example, and uh, with more pictures I guess, yes. Uh, he lived uh, near Cologne in, in Germany and uh, as you can see here he was born in 1891 and he died in uh, 1976 in Paris. A really amazing artist. And I want to show you this picture here. It's in the Guggenheim Museum in, in I think, in New York City. And um, it was painted in, I think, 1926. It's called Zoomorphic Couple. And it's just a basic image which I used for a completely different texture. And just keep an eye on the hand here. This is a screenshot of uh, Substance Alchemist, and um, you see the hand right here. It's mirrored because I'm looking at the surface from the bottom, so to say. I, I just turned it around. It doesn't matter, really. I, I wanted to, to have the hand on the right-hand side, so, so to say. Here you see uh, little points, uh, pokes, peaks uh, sticking out. They come from the displacement mapping of this uh, cobblestone material. And uh, here you see the original. It is uh, here's the hand again, and uh, the alchemist algorithm found ups and downs, like uh, elevations, basically displacement parts. This is lower than this one, for example, because it's darker. It's just one way of alchemists to interpret this structure. And you see here it's more shiny than in other parts, in the yellow parts, for example. That's also an interpretation of alchemist. It does that marvelous job to interpret images and then convert them into a well landscape this is the pure cobblestone and i mixed both of these materials together now this is maya this is the hyper shader and this looks extremely compli complicated and complex but it's uh, it's a screenshot again and um, but it's basically very simple there are three things to put your focus on this part here arrives from Alchemist. This gives you that rich texture. And this node is the placement node for all the texture parts. In previous technologies and procedures, you would have lots of these placement parts here, and you, they would have to have the same UV mapping, which makes things extremely complicated. Here you have the same place texture node, which is responsible for the displacement, for the specularity, for the color, for everything. This is the key node for the alchemist uh, archive, as it's called. And the third thing I want to point your interest to is this one. This is the largest uh, one here in the whole graph. It's where everything ends, and this is what we see here. This is the AI standard surface shader, where everything is plugged in. So you don't have to care about any of these lines. They just look complex, but they do the job more or less automatically. And I'll show you later how this uh, does work. But I made tutorials about this uh, procedure before, and the link is in the description, of course. This is the first application in Maya now. I have this texture here. The hand is somewhere there. And one light in the scene, which uh, I guess you can imagine where it comes from. And uh, the displacement is as it came from Alchemist. In, in Maya, it's the displacement scale 1.0. Now, it's of course very massive, and it's still very massive. What is the difference between these two images? Well, the difference is that here I have a low resolution of my plane. It's a polygon plane with 10 by 10 units, whereas here I have the same polygon plane with the same texture, but with a resolution of 100 by 
100 patches. So this is a matter of the resolution and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this tutorial. I want to point you to this big difference here. It's not dependent on the material in any way. It's only dependent on the resolution of your geometry in Maya. So low resolution here, high resolution here, same texture, same displacement, etc. Now I'm turning down the displacement from 1.0 to 0 0.05, something like that. R very subtle. And this is basically what I want to have. Now, the next image looks almost the same. And the interesting thing is that it is totally different. This one is of a much lower resolution than that one. And uh, they look basically the same. Because actually, this one looks even better than this one. Higher resolution, lower resolution. Higher resolution, lower resolution. Resolution in terms of the texture now, not of the geometry. We're talking about that material, which is based on the Max Ernst and the cobblestone layers. Well, the next picture shows how the low resolution looks like from a close-up shot. So this is the low resolution, that one, applied to that plane, looked at it from very close distance. And the difference between these two things here, which is barely visible, is massive when you go from this resolution, low material resolution, to this one. And that's, that's the second thing I want to point you to. So we're dealing with two kinds of resolutions. One is the resolution of your ge geometry, which is the same between these two here. But the resolution of the map, so to say, of the material which comes from Alchemist is much, much higher here. It's in fact 2048. And here it's only 512. Big difference. And it all came more or less from here and the cobblestone. This is the scene in Maya. I have one camera. That's the camera you see in the animation. And um, this is one light. It's just a single area light which points to that plane here. Of course, you don't see the displacement here. It's a totally flat plane. and. Um, you need to render it in order to see this properly. Now you already get a taste of the deformation. For example, this part here is a little bit higher than the rest. Now I'll show you the alchemist scene. This is Substance Alchemist in the version 2019.1.2 Sesame. And here you see that mixture which uh, is that rich material impression here. And you have that high resolution visible here in Alchemist all the time. And it depends on the export method which you use in order to bring this over to Maya. Basically, um, the I have two layers. And the top layer is that concrete damp wall. When I deactivate it, I only see the Max Ernst painting in the interpretation, in one of the interpretations of Alchemist. And the other part here is just the cobblestones, what you've previously seen. And here you can change the displacement. If you lower this, you get a much more realistic sort of cobblestone structure. And uh, you can play with the numbers here. And if, for example, if you have a stretched geometry, not square in Maya, you would have to change these things here. But uh, this is a different story, of course. Now, when, once you have a material here, you go to this export, I can export the current view, and then you give it a name and a destination and a resolution. And uh, I usually start with 2048 by 2048. Uh, but the other choices are the highest one is f uh, 4096, which takes a little bit longer to really render from Alchemist into an SBSAR file, which is the archive file of Substance. And uh, then you find that 
once you've exported this, then you find it in, and I create a new scene here. You find it in one of your folders. It looks like this in my case, Max Ernst Hand on Stone and an SBSAR file. And uh, I don't drag it right here in the Maya scene, but I need to open the hypershader, which is this icon here. And now I can drop it in here in the empty hypershade window. And uh, I have that the two nodes which I pointed uh, you two in, at the beginning of this tutorial. This is the main substance node and this is the one really wonderful placement which acts on the whole scene, on a, actually on the whole texture once everything is being connected. That's a very simple graph. If you select this one here and you go down here, you see width, width is, which is the resolution you start with. It's 512 by 512 and uh, down here you see workflows Render, render a workflow, you use Arnold or V-Ray or Redshift or whatever, and then you create a shader network. And once you do this, this whole area will fill up with nodes, which you see now, and this is already here. And now you can go to later, when, once you have applied this AI standard surface shader, this one here, you can go to back to this node from coming from Alchemist and you change that resolution. So you go up here and change that resolution to, for example, 2048. And uh, this takes a while and then the maps are being recalculated for the whole graph system and you have that higher resolution which I pointed you to. Last thing I want to show you is the displacement strength, which is an important thing when you import things from Alchemist. So let's um, maybe in this case try this geometry. And we need a light and we create just a sky dome light which wraps around the whole scene. And we need uh, lots of geometry here. So let's start with this, for example. Then I right mouse click, I apply that existing material, which is the AI standard surface shader. It's not the standard surface shader, which comes from Maya since version 2020, but it's the AI standard surface shader, which I could have renamed, but it, that's the one which comes from Alchemist. You don't see this here properly because you need to click here or press a certain key. And now you see that cobblestone working here. It's pretty dim and uh, you can render it, of course, and then you get a better view of that. And the displacement is pretty harsh, as you can see. And uh, once you get closer to that object here, render it again, you see how crude it is because it's only 512. And now you, I show you how to reduce that displacement. You go back to your uh, graph here and the displacement is something which you can reach by clicking on the AI standard surface shader. And actually, this is a good way to do this. You can uh, go to material attributes, then you have that shader here, and you already see the displacement node here. If you don't see it, you have to play with these arrows here, up and down in the hierarchy. And this is the displacement map. This is a file. This is the texture in that 512 resolution, which can be changed to a higher resolution. And here you have that scale. That's the important value for the scale. And now I go to Arnold Viewport Rendering in order to see things directly here when I change things. Let's um, make it 5. Then you have a really big object like this. And 0.1 makes the displacement very subtle. So this is 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.3. You see, we get real shadows now here from the from the light. And back to one, that was what it was. And now final touch, the resolution. We go here, as you might remember, and we create a width of 2048, which takes a while can hover the mouse over here. As long as you don't see any, anything happening here, you don't need to click anywhere. Now it's rendering here. Now it provides us with a new map. And now when we re-render it,
my rendering process actually crashed, which is not totally unusual for the new Arnold version with GPU rendering, but uh, you've seen the result of the higher resolution texture before. And uh, I just want to point you here, this is uh, Substance, and uh, you can get a special offer for education, which means you students and teachers get a free personal license. I actually paid for that license, although I'm currently teaching here, because uh, I just love to, to use it in different contexts. Well, having said all this, I wish you a very good day and a good new year. Bye-bye.